here you have a real town that people relate to back from when they grew up, except with all the modern technologies that make it very unique and really focused on the environment, focused on, on, on energy, focused on education. We wanted to create a true hometown. And in order to do that, you need to have grandma and grandpa there. You need to have uh, the young working families there also. And so we decided to start with the school. And that is crazy. And I understand that. Very few uh, developers will step up and say, OK, I'm going to put a school in first. Usually it's something that happens down the road when you actually start to get uh, more people living there. It was announced that we got the approval for this, this charter school, public charter school. We were inundated with people signing up for the seats. And then we had a waiting list of like 300 students. And what we did then was build a new school. And the new school has over 400 uh, seats in it, and it's K through eight. This time didn't make the same mistake. We saved seats for those who are moving into Babcock Branch, but we have this spectacular project-based learning school, and it's all about the principal. It's all about these incredible teachers who have come in and done a wonderful, wonderful job. This is the work that I truly believe in. I'm pretty passionate about hands-on, high-rigor education environments. And just because of uh, the community and what the community stands for, this really is the perfect educational environment. So Winston is actually my daughter Hallie's dog. Um, but he comes to school every day and he visits classrooms, the kids read to him, he plays uh, with them at recess. There are students that walk him. So I did come for the job first um, because I loved what the school was going to be about and what it was rooted in, but the decision to move out here it definitely was an impact on our family. <laughs> Stand up for a quick second, okay? Can we get your bow fixed? But we, we wanted our, our two girls, I mean, to be able to interact and play and um, and, and go to school in the community that they lived in. You know, I grew up on a dairy farm in Kentucky and I had the opportunity to play outside all the time. I mean, that's all we did was play outside, my sisters and I. While, you know, my girls aren't gonna have that opportunity, they can still have the opportunity to engage in the environment and be around people who appreciate that. But I, I feel like we're constantly outside. And there are days that, like, I'll, ride my bike and Winston will run along and Hallie will ride her bike and we'll pull up with our bikes and just like, it's nice to be close. It's nice to be in a community that has such a community feel. Um, there's always something going on. We had a couple students come in who couldn't read or write in the fifth grade and that was just shocking to us. By the time they graduated to the next level, to sixth grade, they were reading and writing and it's just because of the great job of these, these teachers our curriculum we are a public charter school so we do have to cover the same standards legally that all public schools in Florida have to cover but how we do that is really up to us we have that flexibility and I love giving teachers the autonomy to really design instructional lessons that engage students what we want students doing are much deeper projects we want them thinking about how does it apply or relate to my community that I live in they remember the standards, they remember the academic piece if they can connect it to a real world problem. Uh, and that's what we do here. We have to tread lightly because they're six and seven year olds and it's scary when you start talking about like the changes and the effect that it's having on our environment. And even though we do like the passion and <laughs> you might have to stop. I had a student the other day stand up and she went, it's up to us. It's our future. It's our planet. Every time I talk about it, I get choked up. You know, they, they are coming up with all the ideas. Like if you look at all the things that we have out here on the walls and like our driving question, all of the anchor charts that we've made in the classroom, it's all them. Like it's not us, so. <laughs> the uh, kids, this is actually what we call a, like an SDL time. So the kids are coming down um, during their student-directed learning time and they're just using the lab to help enhance things that they're working on upstairs or, or in their other classrooms. The hands-on stuff is, is 
like the way the world is these days, you know? Um, my own children are here and when we go home and they just tell me some of the things they do, I'm like, oh my gosh, you're in, you're in first grade <laughs> and you can, can build things and tell me about constraints and limitations and, and like, I didn't know that stuff when I was in first grade, so it is amazing. <laughs> Hey! Listen here! Looking for freedom. I'm sorry! My daughter goes to school here. That's kind of one of the reasons I took the job here. You know, and like you can hear, you can see it's it's completely different than anywhere else you'll go. You know, some of the things that we're working on is we're actually going to be going toward an ACE curriculum. So that's done through Cambridge. It's in 160 countries. We will probably be the only school in the region that does K-12. The school is amazing. Eight o'clock every morning. We're 758. Uh, we have eight. Alexa set to remind us <laughs> right. at 758 every morning. The school, the loudspeaker goes on and they do the morning announcements and the Pledge of Allegiance. Arlie and I go out every morning and do the Pledge of Allegiance and that's how we start our day in Babcock Ranch. It's just great. It doesn't, doesn't get better than that. So we really started sales probably in late 17. Our sales pace and what's going on here has exceeded our expectations. Part of having a town is you need to have the facilities there so people don't have to get in their cars and drive and go other places. So we immediately built what we call Founder Square. It has table and tap, a great farm to table restaurant. We have an ice cream store. We also have a general store. We also have a building that has a pre-K. We also uh, have built a large health and wellness center. And the next step for them is to bring in a CCRC or congregate care uh, community that has both independent living and assisted living. When you're creating a town, you have to make sure you're providing a full spectrum of housing types. We have homes that are priced from high ones up to over a million dollars. But there are people who want other types of housing. So we're adding, for example, apartments. We have 336 apartments that are coming in. We have a major grocer that's moving in. We just opened up a golf course. What we learned very quickly is people do care. They care. Not only millennials and the younger generation, but empty nesters care. And the older generation cares. We, we like the atmosphere here, that it's the only solar city, that it's easily accessible, it's walkable. I love that it was built right from the ground up. Sustainability, yes. um, we love that concept. Um, we love the idea that it's open to all, there's a lot of diversity, young families. And they care about what they're leaving for their kids and their grandkids and, and, uh, and, and how it's gonna be for them. I think with the solar, for me, it's kind of a feel good, my small part in trying to be sustainable and that kind of thing. How could you be against solar? <laughs>